there, y'all. Today we're going to look at 1.6 on simplifying expressions. And so the objective is that you will be able to simplify algebraic expressions. And that meets the standard ASE 1, interpret the meaning of coefficients, factors, terms, and expressions based on their real-world context, and interpret complicated expressions as being composed of simpler expressions. And so we're going to be using this standard a lot as we go through the semester. Um, this is just the basics of dealing with terms and coefficients now as we build up through linear, exponential, and quadratic problems. All right, so we've got a little bit of work we've got to do here. First, we need to define what is a like term. And so like terms are terms that have the same variables, including the exponents. And so we're going to look at some examples here and talk about what like terms are and what like terms are not. Now, like terms have to have what? The same variables. So look at example A here. Which of these in example A have the same variables? Well, it would be the 5x and the 3x. Again, they have the same variable, the x in this problem, right? So that's what we're looking for is that same variable. So 5x and 3x. All right, let's look at B. We want to have the ones that have the same variable, including what? including the exponent. And so in B, don't get fooled here. The ones that are like terms are the ones that will have the same exponents on the same variables. And so in this case, it's the x squared and the 8x squared. Because I have an x, and in both of them, the power is squared. And so x squared and 8x squared. All right, let's look at C. I got negative 2y, negative 2, and positive 8. Again, to be like terms, it has to have the same variables. This one has a y, but are there any others that have a y in this problem? No. So let's look at the other two. I've got a negative 2 and a positive 8. Neither of those have variables. And so guess what? They have the same variables. They have no variable. And so negative 2 and positive 8 are the like terms. All right, so D, I want you to look at this one, see what you think. 10y, negative 10, 3y, and 3y cubed. Which two are the like terms? Now, don't get fooled here. Remember, same variable, same exponent. So which one is it? If you said the 10y and the 3y, you have that one right, because needs to have the same variable with the same exponents. Yeah, there's a 3y cubed back here, but there's no other term with a y cubed term for me to look at, right? And then the negative 10, there's no other constants for me to deal with. Remember, constants are numbers that don't have variables, okay? So that's what we're looking at there. And one thing I want to bring up is, and, and you saw this in the 1.5 assignment, remember that the number in front of a variable, so like the 5 here, the 3 here, the 8 here, the 10 and the 3 here, right? What do we call those numbers in front? Remember that term is coefficient. And the coefficient can be different to be like terms. But the variables must be what? The same. So I have this table here of information, and it's already been filled out for you. But I want to go through the different properties. And these are properties you should have seen before, so this should be reviewed but I want to have it here for you, okay? So let's first talk about the commutative property. And remember that the commutative property allows us to switch the order of addition or switch the order of multiplication, right? So as we see in the example, A plus B is equal to B plus A. Because again, the order of addition does not change the sum and the order of the factors does not change the product, right? Associative property, this is grouping, because remember, associative, the root word there is associate, right? And so who do I associate with? Well, here, the A and the B associate together, right? Remember, the parentheses tell me I'm going to add those together first. But over here, I add the B and the C together first, right? And so it doesn't matter which group I do first, the sum does not matter, and the same is true for the product of three items. Okay. 
The identity property, we have it for addition and for multiplication. And so the identity property says, if I have a value added to zero, I get itself back. Just remember, anything plus zero is what? Itself. Well, the name of that property is the identity property. Now, for multiplication, it's not times zero because a number times zero doesn't give us ourself. And so what times itself, what times a number gives us that same number? Well, one times that number gives us the same number, and that is the identity property for multiplication. Now, we do have a zero product property, or a zero property of multiplication in this case, and so anything times zero is what? Zero. Now, is there a zero property of addition? No, because that is the identity property, right? Because anything added to zero is itself, okay? The final property in our table is the distributive property of multiplication over addition, and normally we just call it the distributive property, because we're and this is the one where we go and say, oh, the A is going to multiply to the B, and the A multiplies to the C, and we get A times B plus A times C. And so in the example here, the 3 times the 5 and the 3 times the 2, we write that out, 3 times 5, 3 times 2, and simplify it that way. Now, if we use our order of operations, in this case, we could add 5 and 2, get 7, and then 5, or sorry, 3 times 7 is 21. And so the explanation is that the product of a factor and a sum is equal to the sum of the product. And, and again, that's the technical terminology, but that's what it means. Okay. So let's look at some examples of these properties. So in example two, we're going to list out what property is being illustrated by the question. And so in A, we've got parenthesis 5x plus 6y, close parenthesis, plus 9x is equal to 5x plus parentheses 6y plus 9x, close parentheses on the back. So what's happening here? Are things switching order? Am I distributing? What's going on? Well, the 5x is still first in both sides. The 6y is in the middle, the 9x is in the back. So it's not commutative. Something hasn't moved, right? What's changed? Where the parentheses are, right? And that is which one? Associative. So this is the associative property. And I will warn you, do not abbreviate associative to three letters. Again, do not abbreviate the associative property to only three letters. The associative property of what? Which operation is this over? It's over addition. So the associative property of addition. So let's look at B. 5x plus 6y plus 9x is equal to 5x plus 9x plus 6y. So what's happened in this one? What has changed from the left side to the right side? Well, if we look at the back side of each of these, of the left side and the right side, we see that the 6y and the 9x has done what? Shifted places. And so which property allows us to shift the order of this operation? Commutative. So commutative, right? And the way to remember that this is the commutative and not commutative, um, is that you commute to work, right? Or you commute to school, and so commute is the root word there. So the commutative property of addition. When we look at C, 8x times 7x is equal to 7x times 8x. What's happening in this one? There's parentheses involved, right? But is there, am I really changing the grouping here? No, I'm changing the order. So it's the what? Commutative property. Of which operation? Multiplication. Okay. Let's look at D. We've got five parentheses, 4x minus 3, is equal to 20x minus 15. So what's happening with this one? Well, the 5 is doing what to both? Distributing. So this is a distributive property. And you can just write the distributive property. Distributive property. You don't have to say the distributed property of multiplication over addition. It's just the distributed property is fine. And finally, E. 8x plus 0 is equal to 8x. What's happening here? I'm adding to 0, but adding to 0 does what? Nothing, because that's the identity property I get myself. It's the identity property of which one? Of addition. So again, pay attention to what the operation 
the um, properties are that are happening because they are important to what we do to simplify problems. And when we get to geometry, we're actually going to talk about how to prove an algebraic problem through properties. So pay attention to that. So as we look at example three, we're going to simplify expressions. And we're going to do the first two together, and then I'm going to ask you to do the second two. In A, we've got 4A plus 13 plus 6A. There's no equal sign here, so don't get confused about this and solving equations and all that. We're going to get to that later on this semester, and you've talked about it in previous grades. This is just an expression, so we do what it says. Now, we could go and reorder this and put it in the right order and, and put things together, and sometimes that helps us. So I could reorder this through the commutative property as 4a plus 6a plus 13. Because again, the commutative property allows me to switch the order of addition, and it's still the same thing, right? So what is 4a plus 6a? That is 10a. And remember, when we're adding like terms together, the variable doesn't change, right? So 4a plus 6a is just 10a. We don't add an extra a in there and make it 10aa or something crazy like that. It's just 10a. And then we get the plus 13. In B, what's going to happen here? What property is being shown? We've got to do what? Distribute. And so 7 times x is 7x. And 7 times the negative 4, because this sign attaches to the 4, so 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. So again, we're just using our properties to be able to simplify expressions. So I want you to pause the video in a second here and do C and D, and then come back and we'll look at the answers to these. So pause right now. All right, let's look at C and D. So we got negative 5. What's going to happen here? We're distributing. And so we've got negative 20y, negative 5 times negative 1. That's negative times a negative, which is a positive. 5 times 1 is 5. That's as simplified as it can go. We can't add these together because they're not like terms. Negative 20y plus 5, final answer. Second one here, we've got to distribute, and so we get 16x plus 40, the minus 3x is still out back, we haven't touched that yet, but now we need to combine the like terms. And so remember, they're on the same side, there's actually no side here, so we can commute this, and so we get 16x minus 3x is 13x plus the 40, again. That's the final answer there. So again, don't get overstressed about this. Combine your like terms, use your properties to simplify this to the best you can. Again, it's not gonna come out to one single number, so don't stress over that part. So let's look at our final example here on applying expressions. Kitchen goods are on sale for 35% off the regular price. Additionally, all goods are subject to an 8% sales tax and a $10 shipping charge. If C represents the original cost of the toaster, its total cost be found using the expression 1.08 parentheses, so times 0.65c, close parentheses, plus 10. We're going to find the total cost of the toaster if it originally cost $45. So all of this information here, here, and here is already in our expression. Now, as we go on and we look at section 7 on writing expressions, you're not going to be given this part. You're going to have to write it yourself. Today, you're given the expression. Tomorrow, with 1.7, we won't do that. You'll have to write it yourself. Okay? We're told to find the total cost if the toaster is $45. So where does that go? That goes in for C. So I'm going to get 1.08 times 0 0.65 times the 45 plus 10. Okay? So we're going to simplify this using order of operations and then get to how much this toaster cost. So first we're going to multiply inside here. So 1.08 and 0.65 times 45 is 29.25. The plus 10 is still up back. Our second step will be to multiply the 1.08 times the 29.25. When we multiply the 1.08 to the 29.25, we get 31.59. We still have that $10 out back, and so adding 10, we're going to get 41.59. Now, this is a word problem, so the total cost of the toaster is 
and 59 cents. And remember, word problems require what? Word answers. Okay. So as we look at part B, where does the coefficient of 0 0.65 come from? Now, think about what we've got. Was there anything that had 0.65 anywhere in the word problem? No. But what might relate to the 0.65? If you look, we've got a 35% here, right? But it's 35% what? Off. What is 100% minus 35% equal to? That's equal to 65%. And remember, percents we need to convert to what to be able to use them? Decimals or fractions. And if we convert this to a decimal, it is 0 0.65. So where does the 0 0.65 come from in this problem? It is the cost, it is the sale percentage of the item, right? So again, it's not how much we've taken off, it's the final amount of the item. Okay, so the 0 0.65 comes from doing 1 minus 0 0.35, or what we did up here, the 100% minus 35%. And represents the sale price of the item. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Um, we're one section away from wrapping up this first unit. So again, be sure you're making uh, progress on your assignments and your lesson videos, and I will catch y'all.